Hey, it's Rob Timmings from ECT for Health. Just thought I'd spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, the different types of blood vessels that we've got. Just a, just a little refresher on our blood vessels. Um, this goes a long way to explaining uh, the process of edema as well. So let's just uh, have a look at this pipe that's up on the whiteboard here. This could represent any artery or any vein. So just to recap, uh, blood leaves our heart, it travels through our lungs. Uh, I'm trying to draw a picture of the lungs, so forgive me for my artistry, which is pretty bad. Let's go, there it is, through the lungs. And then it goes back to the heart, particularly the left heart. So it starts in the right heart, travels through the lungs where it picks up oxygen, travels through the left heart, and then it travels out through arterial supply out to the body cells. Returns back through the venous network back to the right heart. So this is essentially our circulation. And you can look for our video on circulation a little later on uh, if you're keen. But where I want to really focus the understanding of these blood vessels is the differences between arteries, veins, and capillaries. Arteries and veins are much like pipes. Blood travels through those pipes, it doesn't leak out of those pipes, it travels from A to B. It's a closed circuit. But capillaries, which is down in the cellular beds, capillaries are very different. Capillaries are less like a hose and more like, do you remember that soaker hose that you used to play under as a kid on a hot summer day? You know, the green one that snaked across the front lawn. Uh, we're not allowed to use them anymore because of water restrictions, but these soaker hoses are full of tiny little pinholes, aren't they? And you would turn the tap up and then they would sprinkle more. The sprinkler hose or the soaker hose. Your capillaries in your body are just like the soaker hose. They're full of holes. The holes are called fenestrations. These fenestrations allow for substances to enter and exit the bloodstream at the cellular level. We're talking about blood vessels here that are a single cell thick. So in comparison, just rub that off. In comparison to the cells themselves, this might be a, a body tissue cell. This might be another cell. So you can see that these capillaries are microscopic in size. And from these capillaries, we constantly leak water and nutrients and gases out through these little fenestrations or these little soaker holes. The rate at which your capillaries leak is reliant on a couple of different principles. One is the pressure, blood pressure, on the inside of your blood vessels is going to influence how much water is pushed out of your capillaries and into your interstitial spaces or these spaces between the cells. That blood pressure is termed hydrostatic pressure. The other pressure that's important to understand on the inside of blood, and that is the oncotic pressure. Oncotic pressure is the pressure that's exerted from proteins particularly a protein on the inside of your bloodstream, which is a very large molecule that holds on to water in your bloodstream. As blood travels through your capillaries, there has to be something inside the blood that's going to hang on to molecules of water and prevent a vast loss. Otherwise, you're just going to leak to death in minutes. That protein that I'm talking about here exerts what is referred to in physics as an oncotic pressure. That protein is called albumin. It's made in the liver, and patients with liver failure often have an inability to manufacture enough albumin, and therefore their capillaries are more ready to leak. And that gives rise to that process called ascites that we see in people with alcoholic liver failure or any other form of liver failure, the swelling and edema that they, they get. 
So the principle here is that capillaries are constantly leaking. What becomes of this water that leaks out of your capillaries? Well, it gets picked up by your lymphatic system and it's taken back into the bloodstream. It's dumped back into your bloodstream. So if you've got a healthy lymphatic system that lines alongside your circulatory system, as much as your circulatory system is leaking water, your lymphatic system is picking that water back up and putting it back into the blood to maintain your blood volume. Can you understand that if you had a lymphatic failing, then this tissue is going to start to swell. As water accumulates into these interstitial spaces, it will start to cause uh, a swelling or an edema. And that's exactly what happens in patients who have lymphatic failure. Another mechanism that causes edema is the mechanism whereby the capillary itself might become damaged. So let's take away some of this other visual pollution on the screen and come right back to our raw capillary. Remember, this capillary has got blood pressure in it. It's also got oncotic pressure from these molecules of protein that are too large to fit through these small holes. But what happens when this tissue is damaged? It might be a burn or it might be a crush injury. What happens is these fenestrations become larger. They quite literally get bigger. As they get bigger, they allow more substances to exit the capillary. Now, with fenestrations that are this big, these molecules of albumin that normally reside inside the bloodstream holding the water in, these albumin molecules can leak outside. And when these albumin molecules start to leak outside through these large fenestrations or these large open pores within the capillary bed, what we actually see is these albumin molecules now shift the oncotic pressure from the inside of the bloodstream into the outside of the bloodstream. And in doing that, they act like water magnets and they suck more water out. That's the whole mechanism why somebody with a burn gets big blisters and gets a lot of edema. They are literally losing plasma volume. The larger the damage to an area of tissue, the more the edema and the more the plasma loss, the more albumin is lost out of the bloodstream. And the less capacity that person's bloodstream has to hold water inside it. The consequence therefore over time, and this can happen in minutes to hours, and it certainly depends on the size of the person's injury. But the consequence, of course, is that blood pressure will start to drop. And when blood pressure drops, we get a reduction in oxygen delivery to those very cells that these capillary beds were designed to keep alive in the first place. This is the mechanism of edema.